What is going on? And welcome to another Four Wheel Drive Talk episode. And friends, we're going to be jumping back to Abilene, Texas. Now, earlier this year, actually in January, I hopped on plane and flew from Irvine, California, out to Abilene, Texas to meet up with the folks with BTR Outfitters. Turns out they had a lot of really cool stuff that they allowed me to play around with and turn on the camera so I can share my 411 or my opinion, first impressions with you guys. Now, while I was there, I had the opportunity to tour various products that they sell, like the lineup of AT Overland truck toppers, which I have to say were pretty darn cool. So in today's video, I'd like to share my first impression of the AT Topper Habitat truck topper. So this is gonna be the first in a series of videos on these toppers. Now, in each instance, I'm gonna give you the lowdown of the topper's general specs, the features, I'm gonna discuss my first impressions and share loads of video footage that I shot while getting a first-hand view of these toppers. Now, I said there's three of them, and so I have to say, the one that I'm gonna be sharing with you today, you're gonna to wanna to tune in. Personally, this one is my favorite. Now, also what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna add a interview that I had with the owner of AT Overland towards the end of this video. Now, I actually had a chance to sit down with this guy before I headed out to Texas and Guys, I'm actually glad I did. It helped me appreciate the products that I was able to tour out there. So before heading off, I took a lot of the questions that we saw from you guys on these things. And of course, I had some of my own and sat down with this guy. Well, not really sat down, but we did it over Zoom. And so I was able to ask these questions and we got a lot of really cool answers. But anyway, at the end of the video, so you'll want to tune into that. And one thing I do want to point out here. So I mentioned earlier, this is a series of three of these videos. Now the interview, if you've seen one of these, depending upon when you're watching this video, um, if you've watched the interview already, it hasn't changed. I'm just putting the same interview in this in each of these videos here. So if you're watching the one on the Habitat, like what we're watching right now, well, you can see the interview there. If you're watching it on one of the other two, you'll be able to see the interview, have the, have the opportunity to hear directly from the CEO or the founder of the company without having to jump onto one of these other videos here. So with that said, you have a roadmap for the next uh, few impression videos that I have in the works. So let's get to the first one. But friends, before before we go diving into all the good stuff here, well, look, we put these videos together to help you make more informed decisions on, well, in this case, an AT Overland Habitat Topper. So if you find some value with this video, we sure would appreciate you crushing the heck out of that like button down below. That said, pull up a seat and hey, it's that time. Let's go. All right, you guys know the drill. Let's kick the first impression review off with a quick overview of some of the basic specs, the features of this AT Overland Habitat. Now, first off, if it's a variety of midsize and full-size trucks, including the Ram, Ford, Jeep, GMC, Chevy, and more, and there are various different bed sizes as well, from the small five foot all the way up to an eight foot bed. Now, the base of this thing is anywhere from 62.75 inches long by 61 wide, 34.25 inches tall to 99.5 inches long, 70 inches wide, 35.25 inches tall. Now the size really depends on your specific truck, but each model sleeps two people. You know, it's strange. When I was inside this thing, this thing's massive. I'm surprised they put two people because as I see it, I mean, well, you know, I bet you could fit two adults in there. If you have a kid or maybe two kids, you can pop them in there as well. Anyways, this thing is big at, at up to 86.5 inches long with the three season tent is open or actually when it is open. So you get 91 inches of standing room and 51 inches of headroom over the bed, but it closes down to a compact size for travel. So anywhere from 32.75 inches to 36.75 inches tall. Again, it really depends on the truck size. Now the topper's base weight is 340 pounds, but the bed accommodates up to 600 pounds. Now the topper is constructed with insulated aluminum composite panels. Other materials include stainless steel hardware, 0.090 inch 5052 CNC formed aluminum and wax impregnated with fire retardant, I'm sorry, cotton poly canvas. Now there is a built-in awning that covers the entrance of this, which is, when you think about it, that's really nice when you're out in pretty nasty weather. Now, inside the tent, you'll find a two inch high density foam mattress, which I can say is crazy comfort. Uh, and that actually offers quite a bit of space as well at 80 by 
48 inches in size. Now the tent has a clothing gear loft and four side pockets to help you keep all your stuff all nice and organized. Now the top area has interior carpeting for added comfort, but there's also built-in wiring with double USB ports, a 12 volt socket and five interior LED lights. Now this thing is really built like a tank for hard off-road travel, but there's also locking uh, lift gate on the back of this thing. The lift gate has LED lights on it and the roof can be walked on as well. So again, when I said a moment ago, this thing is built like a tank. It really takes it to another meaning. Now, despite its large size when this thing is deployed, this thing only takes a couple minutes to get this thing set up and it only takes a couple minutes to put this thing away as well. Now, here's one of the other things that I really admire about this thing. There are a ton of available options, including you have uh, windows, hatch doors, pre-wiring for solar panel, and a roof rack you can throw on the top of that sucker as well or add some solar panels, a uh, room enclosure for a living room, a heater, interior cabinets, to name a few. Actually, that's more than a few, but you get the point. There's a ton of stuff that you can do to these things, which is really nice. In other words, AT Overland really spent a lot of time in the design and the engineering of this topper to be much more than a simple cover your truck bed. Now, as you can see on your screen, this thing is beautifully well-built, well-designed, and has a ton of high-end materials that increase both the comfort and of course the durability. So this begs the question, what features jump out to me when I toured this thing when I was at Abilene, Texas. All right, in the beginning of this video, I shared with you out of the three toppers that they make, this one hands down was my favorite. I mean, it got the gears going. I really dig this thing. So one of the pros with this I'm gonna start off with, it really has a killer design that is like a hybrid of a topper and a, a sliding camper. So you actually get the, the marriage of both worlds kind of combined there, which allows you to hop in and hit the road a very quickly very quickly. It'll let you get on the road very fast. Now you can stand up inside this thing, which is really nice as well. There's tons of windows inside the tent that let in a lot of natural light. And that's one of the things when I was out there that I really admired. I sat in this thing probably a good 15, 20 minutes. You know, the cameras weren't on. I was just really admiring the, the how well lit it was. And it just it, inside of outside, it looks big. Inside, it looks a lot bigger. So again, the windows and just the, the natural light that's getting into this thing was really fantastic. Now the topper only weighs 340 pounds despite offering tons of interior space. Again, I'm circling back around to the size of this thing. And of course, going back to the easy setup and takedown, which just takes, again, a couple minutes, depending upon what direction you're going. And you can sleep off the ground inside a rock solid, well-supported tent. Now the base price of this thing, and that's what I was actually surprised about. If I had not seen, if I did not know what the price of this thing was, I would have guessed this to be well into the 20s for the base price of this, but the base price of this actually starts at 14,000. So you can get a well-made rig without needing to take out a stinking second mortgage, which these days is a big plus. All right, so now here's where the part of the video where I struggled with the most, because the fact of the matter is this video, I wanted to go live last week, but the sticking point for me here, and you guys may have heard this in the past, in a review video, if there's not a con, you can always find a con in almost anything. And that's the part where I was struggling and I was trying to think what I didn't like about this thing. So this is this is this is all I have, and this is a bit of a stretch. So work with me on this. So if you are towing a trailer, I know. If you're towing a trailer, the con that I can, the only con that I can think of here is when you deploy this thing, depending upon the height of your trailer, you're going to have to disconnect your trailer because th this top, as it folds out, potentially could hit the trailer. So you'd have to disconnect your trailer in order to launch this thing. That's the only con I could come up with. Um, so if I come up with anything more, I will put it in the comments, but... You know, rather than prolonging this video any further, I've literally spent the last couple weeks really trying to, going through my footage, going through my notes, trying to find something I didn't like about this thing. All right, that said, let's shift gears and I'm gonna insert now the interview, the Zoom call that I had with the owner, going through your questions, kind of with 
some of mine as well, mashed in with some of mine as well. So let's take a look at what he has to say. All right, Mario. So to get this kind of moving along here, let's start off with the very basics. What is AT Overland? So AT Overland is an outfitter and a manufacturer. So we like to look at ourselves as more as a company that enhances people's experiences versus just being a manufacturer that sells a component or a product, right? So we started as a trailer importer in 2000 and then became a trailer manufacturer when we realized that the foreign overland products were not up to snuff for the US market, developed our own products, created our own suspension systems, and then uh, eventually we got into upfitting vehicles. So we started doing a lot of that. And then that morphed into carrying other brands of campers and then developing our own campers over time. So we develop, produce, sell. Now that's, and, and the upfitment side. So you can have a client come to us and they have nothing. They don't have a truck. They've got zip. And we'll coach them through the entire process of how do you select a vehicle? Why would you pick a certain vehicle? We want to understand what their end goal is before we spec something out for them. So we'll do everything here from spec the truck, suspension work, upfitment modifications, compressors, communications, things like that, as well as building the flatbed. We'll use the OEV flatbeds from Canada that you interviewed uh, Arnold about and uh and then do a turnkey vehicle. So it can be an extensive process for a client. Some of our clients just want to buy our accessories. Some of the products that we use when we build a truck, those are available through us as well. So you bring up something quite interesting. You bring up Enhance, which I really, I really resonated with the with how you presented that. But then at the same token, as you're as you're saying that, enhancing the user's experience and kind of tailoring towards what they aspire to get mm-hmm. out of camping, you know, the uh, you know, overlanding, whatever it might be. But in the back of my head, so it's always interesting when I come across that you founded the company, correct? Yep. Started Super in my cool. garage. <laughs> so I have I have a question. When I when I come across people that that are founders of a company, it's always interesting to ask or get an understanding of their why. You know, hmm. they woke up one day and decided, well, hell, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna bring this market, this product to market. So you started off in your garage one day, going jump into the Wayback Machine and going to that morning that you decided, hell, I'm going to fire up a company. I'm going to call it AT Overland. <laughs> what was the original inspiration behind doing so? Were you a, a heavy camper or overlander prior to that? So a little bit of background on me. So um, I'm originally from a very small town in Northern California. Uh, it was about 350 people when I grew up there, 1,600 people now who uh, at the age of 10, I moved to East Africa and I lived in Ethiopia and spent, you know, my adolescence, you know, bumming around the bush. And that's where I learned how to drive. When I returned to the U.S., I got involved in the printing and publishing industry and I was in high speed printing and publishing for 27 years. I saw that that industry was starting to go away. And so I was planning my exit strategy from that industry. Most of the people that I rescued out in the middle of the desert and points beyond were typically uh, European tourists. I'm multilingual. And so I saw that there was a need for a properly equipped tour company for the remote areas in the U.S. I realized that none of the equipment existed. I'm an equipment manufacturer now. (laughs) so i parlayed all of my manufacturing experience from printing and publishing um into how we execute uh sheet metal design so the way you would manufacture packaging for example how a cardboard box is folded and bent and put together and you glue them well that's the equivalent of folding sheet metal and welding Wow. So I took all of those skills and applied it to how to manufacture trailer bodies that would be durable enough to survive a rollover situation. Um, and then developed a suspension system because most off the shelf suspension systems are not compliant enough for off-road travel. And then that just continued to snowball into all these other products over the years. You are a very interesting character. So the, 
a lot of cases I would just like take that answer and just run forward. But what's, what's eating away in the back of my head right now is what brought you to, are you military or what brought you to Africa? Cause those are some really, <laughs> before this call started, I share with you one of my passions and actually one of my other companies is the photography community. So I love photography in Africa. Well, I've traveled all around this world. I've never been in Africa. It's one of those mm. bucket list places because there is oh, yeah. so much to photograph there. So what brought you to Africa to begin with? You don't get to pick your parents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm the youngest of five and there's a big gap between me and number four. And I was the last one at home. And my my mother decided that it would be interesting to do consulting work in in Africa. And she got a gig there that ended up becoming a UN gig. And so she was always attached to scientific organizations like insect research, uh, cattle, things like that. So that was yeah. around a scientific community that spent a lot of time in the bush. That's super cool. Well, Africa, in my, in my opinion, I think Africa in Australia, New Zealand, and so forth, these are the granddaddies of overlanding and off-road mm. and, and stuff yeah. like that. So it's it's cool to see that you were able to immerse yourself into this culture and you know be right where some where some of these communities you know strive and so forth. And so you're able to capture a lot of that. And so mm. that's, that's pretty cool stuff. Now I'm going to refer back over to my my trusty questions that are right to my left here and get okay. us back on, on path here. So one of the things I've noticed is on your website you guys have a number of pretty stinking cool uh truck toppers uh three of them yeah. to be exact you have the atlas you have the habitat you have the summit yeah from a bird's eye view how are these three toppers different from one another that's, that's a good question so again begin with the end in mind what's the end goal how many people are you going to support what type of environments are you going to be in what type of terrain etc so those are the questions we ask any prospective client uh, to help them pick a topper so the first topper that we developed is actually the most complex and that's the habitat and that's the habitat flips backwards and right exactly so that's a little bit of an engineering trick uh, in how we create rigidity with very lightweight components and support that fulcrum. Uh, that particular topper is great if you have two or more people and you're in a three season type traveler. Uh, and I say three season because fabric is not a great insulator. And so if you need insulation, you wanna do something else. Um, that unit, basically you can take a five foot truck and turn it into a 15 and a half foot long palace on the inside. So it's unique in that respect. There's no other product like that on the market. And um, there was for a while, there was a product called a flip pack. They went out of business many years ago. They executed their design differently. Um, so it's great if you have like two people and a kid or two kids, you can sleep four in that. Um, if you are a hardcore four season traveler, then we're going to recommend the summit. The summit has a wedge shaped roof, which will shed snow. You can also keep, uh, a hundred pounds worth of cargo on the top and still lift it easily. So if you're carrying skis or you've got a rocket box or kayaks or whatever your outdoor toys of choice are going to be, they can stay up on top. Um, also the interior cubic volume is the least in all of our toppers. So that means it takes less energy to heat and cool it. And so in the winter time, a little bit of heat applied to that environment will make it really comfortable. Go a long way. Yeah. The Atlas topper uses the same components, but it lifts straight up. And the reason for doing that is it creates more foot room at at the foot of the bed. So somebody who's tall, it's a six foot plus, is going to be more comfortable in an atlas than they would be in a summit. Um, both the atlas and the summit, we offer a thermal liner for the tent fabric. Uh, so it makes both of those more suitable for, for four season. The challenge with the atlas is if you are a heavy duty snow traveler and you do get snow load on top, you're that extra engine to compensate for that additional weight. It's because we size the gas springs for how the unit is built. So if it has roof racks or 
a roof hatch or a fan or solar panels, we'll size the struts for that. But we can't accommodate for the unknown snow load. Interesting. Yeah, you have three very unique flavors. Now, mm -hmm. one of the things that you brought up earlier, uh, I heard you say something about a five foot. Um, so can I assume you're talking about the bed? And that being the case, you know, two of the most popular yeah, some probably will argue me in the comments down below. But two very popular overlanding rigs, you have the Gladiator and you have a number of Toyotas out there. They both have uh, or can have short truck beds. So yeah. are your toppers designed, am I understanding correctly, your toppers are designed to go on these smaller these smaller pickups? Yeah, so we have uh, a topper that is unique to the Gladiator. It has a unique bed size. There's no other truck that crosses over into that bed size so we offer all three of our topper models for the gladiator then the uh nissan frontier and the ford ranger have a version of a five foot bed that is shorter than the tacoma or the colorado so we make five foots for those two models of trucks and five foots for the other two models of trucks and then six foot for all of those and then five and a half foot in the full size market. So that would be like an F-150 Raptor, for example, um, or a Toyota Tundra with a five and a half foot bed, Chevy, et cetera, all those brands, like even a Ram 1500. Then we make a six and a half foot for the full size market. We make an eight foot for the full size market. And then there's one more unique bed out there and that's for the uh, Ford F-250 and F-350, which has a taller cab and it's a six and three quarter foot bed. So we cover all of those models. We don't do the, what we call the, the not trucks, which would be like the Honda Odyssey, which doesn't actually have a frame, it's a unibody um, or the Maverick at this point. We don't see enough bandwidth in that market space right now. In terms of the manufacturing process, can you take a moment to expound a little bit on how you guys go about manufacturing these, and actually with focus on the material that you guys use? Each one of the toppers has what we refer to as a base. And the base is what attaches to the bed of the truck. And then it has the upper section. So the upper section is the variable which changes. So you can have the same lower section, the base, and you can have three different flavors of toppings on it. It could be a Habitat, a Summit, or an Atlas, right? Um, the lower base section is made up of a combination of laser cut and uh, bent aluminum. We use 090 thick aluminum 5052 because 5052 bends well. We use a minimum number of welds throughout we have reinforcement plates in various places, and then we bond one inch thick honeycomb composite to the inside walls of the lower. And that gives it rigidity and provides insulation at the same time. So you can literally take, you can take a hammer and you can pound the side of one of our toppers and it's, <laughs> it's just gonna bounce back in your face. Uh, I think on one of our videos on our website, I demonstrate the what we call green piece, which is our biggest hammer in the shop banging against a piece of that, and it just bounces right off. Wow. The midsection and upper uh, is also sheet metal bent, um, but the our design creates um, a unique beam section that is very rigid, but yet very lightweight. So it's a hollow beam section that that we form into it. We wow. use a lot of adhesives. Uh, adhesives have the advantage of having elasticity uh, so that when your vehicle is off-road, you got a lot of vibration and things are moving around, you can have this elasticity between the parts and so it'll return. So based on where or what the component is, we use different adhesives. This is done in the aerospace market uh, in truck transportation, trailers, et cetera. So it's a very effective methodology for bonding components together. I've I've seen your your toppers before and really admire the design of these things. The part I didn't know is that you had that, when you mentioned you have that honeycomb in the center down there. Yeah. yeah. That is really, really slick. So from not only from a sound standpoint, you you know, because you can you see if you needed 
to sleep inside these things without extending the top. Could you do that? Not really. I mean, you have to sleep in the bed of the truck because the, the top section is only eight inches. Got it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's only eight inches thick, right? So you would have to deploy it if you wanted to sleep in the in the bed section. It's it's not like a it's not like a pop up camper like uh, like a light industries uh, camper like their Camp X, for example. There will be a gap uh, in between uh, the roof and the bed that potentially you could get into the camper and sleep in there. No, I get that. And I think I just had one of those because I have a gladiator myself and the mm -hmm. I understand the 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 length of the bed. And so I think in my head, I answered it at the same token. So you could get in there, but you'd have to be sleeping diagonally. You'd have to you be sleeping in the truck bed. Yeah. So yeah. but what where I'm leading with this is because you have that R you have that that honeycomb there and with that yeah. R value. I mean, if you're really in a super cold, cold, and let's imagine for a moment, otherwise you had like a two kilowatt diesel heater in the back of there. And it, it, let's say you're like in something ridiculous, you know, cold weather where it's that heater's not going to do anything up, up, up above because of the canvas. Uh, you lose a bit of that R value with that. You can, so, in an emergency situation, stay in the, the bed area. So for what it's worth, uh, we do offer an optional heater and if you if you were in negative 10 weather and you had say our summit topper which would be what i would recommend you're telling me you're the four season guy so i'm going to recommend the summit topper and i'm going to tell you get our insulated liner for the tent and get our heater uh in negative 10 weather if you were not careful with the thermostat you could cook yourself right out of there you, you, you would get the you would get the temperature up into the high 70s low 80s and you'd be uncomfortable um now are you guys running propane diesel or gas heaters in these things when you when you offer as an option our heater is a forced air heater made by truma and okay. it's a propane version um diesel while diesel has more um, BTU per gallon than propane does. Diesel heaters require maintenance, and a lot of people forget that. There is a huge popularity right now with inexpensive Chinese knockoffs of <laughs> diesel heaters, specifically the Esh Bar. Um, if you're going to buy a diesel heater, buy an Esh Bar or Wabasto and buy the good product because it's going to last you. Um, we've tested the Chinese heaters and we, have, we tested three units and all three of them failed, uh, at some point. And we don't like to send people out in the field with equipment that they may be staking their lives on, <laughs> Brother, uh, um... that, that doesn't pass our tests. <laughs> so, but the Truma is a propane heater. Propane is ubiquitously available throughout the U S it's easy to use. Uh, it doesn't have the issues that diesel heaters have of like sooting up or having glow plugs fail in, in the heater units. So they're super quiet, super clean, and efficient as heck. All right. Super cool, Mario. So now let's kind of shift gears here a little bit. Now, I know this might be a surprise, but there are a number of topper camper companies out in the marketplace there. Yeah. What do you feel are some of the best features about your campers that separate you from some of the other noise out there we use very few welds and by design uh, welds can be problematic uh in in a high vibration environment let's say washboard roads uh, that becomes the weak link because the the metal is more brittle in those spots so we don't do a lot of welding like i told you before we use a lot of different specialty adhesives and uh we're the only brand out there that has a, a honeycomb composite in in the wall for a lot of reasons, rigidity and insulation. Um, a lot of the other brands are doing more welding than we are. Uh, some of them are sort of tube frame with aluminum skin. Um, it's, it's just a different thought process, but we prefer to avoid welds at, at all costs. Do welds, are they impacted or do they become, uh, the, the strength of it become a little bit brittle or compromised during super cold weather? Not really. It's, mm -hmm. they, they become compromised at 
the, the, at the time that they're welded and mm. to weld aluminum is a special skill to do it well. And uh, our welders are all certified uh, and, and that's key. Um, the, if the welds are not done right, they're not going to work over time. And so you have that human element that, that can be the weak link in, in the manufacturing process. So if you reduce that as much as possible, then you're going to have a more consistent product. So you you have three campers. You have the Summit, you have the Atlas, and then you have the Habitat. From a dry weight standpoint, um, there's no there's no tanks in any, any of these, is there? No, they're toppers. Oh, okay, toppers cool. don't so have just, tanks. Yeah. Just clarifying. So from a from a weight standpoint, which is is it is the summit or which one's the lightest? The habitat is the lightest. It weighs about 360 pounds, depending on the truck. Wow. And the Atlas is the heaviest. Uh it can depending on the truck, it can be as high as 410 pounds. Well, still, that's not as heavy as I thought it would be. And how yeah, about the they're summit? still they're still light. The yeah. summit is r right in there. It depends on the truck again how how long the lower section is. Um, but you know, the average summit is around three hundred and eighty pounds, somewhere in that neighborhood. Well, you know, what's funny is uh, I would have guessed the weight to be a little bit heavier with these here. Uh, that's actually quite impressive. So when you get when you get out the location now, do you do much? Overlanding camping yourself? Oh, yeah. So, you know, as well as I do, when you get... That's where all those designs come from. <laughs> <laughs> so, when, you, when you've when you been driving all day and it's just time to unplug and so forth, one of the biggest drags is when you get the location and then you have this just big elaborate camp that you have to, you know, set up. And um, what is the time set up? So, once you get the location, how quickly can you get one of these things set up? Summit takes about 30 seconds, um, an atlas about a minute, and a habitat about two minutes. And if you can't do it in that time, we'll take it back. So, and we spoke about earlier with whether or not these things could be used as a four season. So the four season, you could use, pick up one of these Truma heaters that you guys sell and use it in any of these, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Super cool. And from a from a mounting standpoint, are you guys mounting that actually inside the cab or is it an extra unit of some sort? So we actually mount the heater to the side wall of the topper. So inside that or way, out? Inside. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that way the, the heater is part of the topper. So if you were, let's say you got suckered into helping your friend Bob move and you got to take your topper off, um, the heater's not going to be in the bed of the truck. It'll be attached to the topper and you can take the topper off. Okay. So jumping over to your habitat, I have to say out of, out of all these toppers right here, this thing looks pretty stinking cool here. One of the questions, when I look at this, you have obviously a large portion of that cantilevering off the back end of the top itself there. So you may know where I'm leading with this. What sort I of the question. Thing, what's that? <laughs> I hear the question. Yes, indeed. What sort of weight can that handle? We rate it for 600 pounds, and that's 600 pounds of activity. Okay. Uh, it's very stout. It's cantilevered in the same way that a bridge would be cantilevered in, in construction. And like I said earlier, we have a unique box beam construction that allows that to be as rigid as it is. Um, it's not uncommon for people to come to see us at a show and they see that habitat for the first time. And their first instinct is the biggest guy in the room wants to do pull-ups off the back end of it. And we always <laughs> encourage that. We've the, been uh, making the habitat, uh, in that form with a cantilever since 2015. So it's been around and there's hundreds and hundreds of units out there. So, and actually, I'm going to just one additional question on that. And this focuses on, you know, you, so you have the, you have it deployed. Now yep. I'm looking at this right here and you, most items, when you go to close it, now you're restricted to how high your hands can go there, which will probably from an ang angle standpoint, get it a fraction away to closing. How do you close that up? Okay. So there's two support rods that are connected. 
Well, let me start from the beginning. So when you open it, it has gas springs that assist in that opening, right? And so as it goes through its motion, the gas springs are neutral when it's at 90 degrees. And then those gas springs start to engage again. So when it when you open it, it doesn't fully open. It actually rests at about a 35 degree angle. Then you have to pull it down. And then there's a connecting rod that goes between the lid and the body, the base. And that serves as a cantilever support and when you are wanting to close it, you take those two support rods off, you connect them together and they make one long pusher rod and you connect it to the side and you can push it up and over. If you look on our website, you'll see that there's a video showing the opening and closing of it using the pusher rods, which then become the support rods. So you don't have to do this from the back. You're actually doing it all from the side. That one will hold how many people? You can sleep four people in there if you get our optional uh, bifold panels. So you have this open structure, right? This part that's hanging off to the back, that's the, the bed that has the mattress in it. This area here is open to the truck bed down below, right? But you can close that section off. We have these bifold panels that will go in there and you can create another platform. And then you can put, you know, like some inflatable thermorest mattresses on that and two more people can sleep in that space very cool so this with a small family could get away with using the habitat then oh yeah absolutely we have a lot of families that have habitats so final question and mario this is a this is a hot seat question here so i'm really itching to hear if there was a single word that you think would best describe your toppers what would that word be innovative very cool all right, friends, and there you go. With that, you have a long, hard look at the AT Overland Habitat. Now, I can't tell you how impressed I was with this topper and the engineering team at AT Overland. And after watching this video, eh, you may be in the same boat as well. Now, if you want to learn more about the AT Overland Habitat truck topper, I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can do just that. And friends, that is it. Before we go shifting up or shifting gears off this uh, video here, let's talk about our current current giveaway, we have three excellent prizes up for the grab. We have the tailgater tire table, we have a black rifle coffee, and of course, the $100 Amazon gift card. Now, as always, friends, we make it super easy for you to participate in these things. Step one, like this video and subscribe to our channel. Step two, leave a comment below. In fact, the more of our videos that you watch, you'll leave a comment on the more chances that you have to win. So by all means, get watching our other video and leave some comments. Step three, register on four-wheel drive talk and introduce yourself in the forum. Now, if you happen to have registered on the site already during one of the last giveaways, you're still eligible to win. But as I keep saying over and over again, swing in by, say hello. We would love to see you. And friend, that is it. For complete details on the giveaway, including how to register on Four Wheel Drive Talk or how to say hello in the forum, check out the description below. Good luck. And all right, friends, and that is officially it for this video. Now, Look, as cliche as it sounds, this video was legitimately a lot of fun to put together. And if I can make it a recommendation here for you, all the footage that you just saw, just saw on the screen here, all the videos, footage, and all that other fun stuff, I can tell you right now, does these things absolutely no justice to what they, what they, how they present themselves in person? So if you happen to be on the fence. Uh, with regards to one of these things, I would make the heavy recommendation check with um, check with these guys to see if they're going to be at Overland West. Um, I want to say I saw them there, or better yet, you can hop on a plane down to Abilene, Texas, which the main airport is Dallas, and you have a quick little thirty-minute flight over to Abilene. Abilene was such a uh, a friendly, charming little Texas uh, community. And that's where, of course, Better Outfitters is out of. And then you can actually sit in each of these and go, you know, look at each one of these things. And that, to me, is really where the proof is in the pudding. Man, I hate cl cliche remarks. Pro proof is in the pudding. Who came up with that? What is that exact proof is in the pudding? What the hell does that mean? Anyways, you can go to Better Outfitters and you'll be able to get a touchy feel on sitting in these things and really appreciate when I say earlier, I was telling you about where I was sitting in one of these things and just appreciating the, the space, appreciating where I was and 
yeah, if you're a nature person, you'll you'll understand where I'm coming from. But anyway, that is it. So Abilene, Texas, call Better Outfitters and and see about getting a, a time slot to get out there and play around with these things or jump inside them or tour them. Boom, there we go. But at any rate, friends, as always, look, we know there are a lot of options on YouTube that can grab your attention, so we are grateful that you've given us uh, a few minutes of your time. We hope this video was uh, meaningful and helpful and perhaps answered some questions for you. As always, it's that time of the video where I'm gonna ask you to do all that YouTube stuff, so please consider hitting the like button, subscribe, and so therefore you don't miss a single video just like the one that you just watched. Hit the all notifications and so every time that we come out with a new video, YouTube is it's gonna do its thing and send you out a little uh, a little notice. But anyways, I'm gonna be shutting off the camera. So friend, you get out there, stay healthy, and find your adventure.